The next story I wanted to talk about, it's funny because I had this story prepped to go before I went on vacation. So that was back in August. I had CCA XX1 ready to go. I was hesitant to put it out, not because that I'm afraid that if I record it, I'm going to get arrested or I'm going to disappear or anything like that. I was hesitant because I feel that it's it deals with a particular subject matter that I'm not 100% well versed on now you're thinking jason you couldn't even talk about sexy coconuts with any sort of of knowledge base and to, to be fair on that i was kept talking about the coco de mer had like fur on it like a coconut they don't as i was getting the episode when i was finished the episode I was getting the artwork ready for it i'm looking at all these pictures i'm like they're not even furry so that's part of the issue of a single person doing a daily podcast is sometimes Slight details, <laughs> slight details fall through. I guess it has a little bit of fur, but this subject is quite complex. Now I'm going to have to focus it in into about nine, ten minutes. But when we get to the end, you'll real and I'll, you'll kind of start to see the weaknesses of my personal knowledge in a certain area. And so I would like to reach out to you guys who listen to it, who will have more experience with this, to kind of help me suss it out. Because I, I, I really believe that I figured out what CCA XX1 is. Now, let's go ahead and go on the journey of CCA XX1. It is something that's been on the Conspiracy Iceberg since 2017. So this is one of the oldies, like Aglish Travel. CCA XX1. People look at it, and that's all that it shows. CCA-XX1. Just as humans, when we see something mysterious, we want to know more about it. So there was quite a few theories over what this was, just like golf rumors where people were kind of throwing out theories and seeing what was coming up. And it was also one of those things saying, if you talk about this, you're going to get arrested. If you talk about this, you're going to disappear or goblins are going to come out of your vents or whatever. You're going to get blown up by a space laser. So let's start with that. Not being blown up with a space laser. But so one of the theories was that it was the platform. It was basically the operating platform for what's known as the Zuma satellite. Now, the Zuma satellite is a mysterious payload that was on a SpaceX rocket that supposedly failed and the satellite was never launched into orbit. There's been speculation that it's a spy satellite. There's been speculation that it's a killer satellite in the sense that it's a weapon that's sent up to destroy other satellites. There's been speculation of all sorts of stuff. I'm sure people have thought it's Project Bluebeam, which is a theory that Holographic aliens are going to appear in the sky or holographic gods going to appear and and it's the start of the New World Order. I'll do another episode on that because that's quite fascinating. But there's a lot of theories of what the Zuma satellite is. The official story is the satellite failed to get into orbit. There was this issue with the actual launch and it basically plummeted Earth or disappeared or blew up. We don't know what the Zuma satellite was. No country has taken credit for launching. It was a private SpaceX rocket. No country has come forward and said, we're the ones who created this satellite. It was a private company that created it. Supposedly, they installed it on the rocket themselves. It had to be done very delicately. So people are like, what's so delicate about this satellite as opposed to other satellites? One thing about the Zuma satellite is people believe that it is up there. But no astronomer, no amateur astronomer has been able to locate it. I'm going to strike Zuma satellite off of CCA XX1 because the Zuma satellite was launched in 2018 and the iceberg predates it. So it it wasn't that. Unless you could say, well, no, maybe it was on the iceberg because the operating system was being installed. But I think we can safely say that the two issues are too far apart for it to be the Zuma satellite. So we can take that off. So then we have the option of CAXX1. So we lost the C, but CAXX1 is a United States Geological Survey well that was dug in Virginia. I mean, that's how much people really wanted to figure out what this could mean. They're like, does this well lead somewhere? Did they discover some sort of cryptid in the well? Is the well full of aliens? No, no, no. It's a well in Virginia. It doesn't match the CCA, the CAXX1, but I I mean, I pulled it up on my search and I looked into it and I was kind of digging around. It's just a well. That's when I get called a shill when I say stuff like that, but CCA. So what I started to do is I started breaking it down, looking for each individual one. I needed to find them combined, but CCA is also known as the Corrective Corporation of America. It is a private prison group 
That is something that was originally tossed around that CCA XX1 was some sort of private prison program where they were going to start rounding up dissidents and throwing them into prisons. I couldn't tie that into XX1. That was the problem. What, and the reason why I go through all of these options, because I'm going to come up with my conclusion, but you may have a different one. People may say, oh, you're just wasting time. But I like to throw out the different conclusions and why I dismissed them or why I went forward. And, and let me say, for the CCA, as far as the Corrective Corporation of America, they're not called that anymore. And I went through documents they had looking for page 21 or chapter 21, or and I couldn't find any connection to that, because XX1 could also be read as 21. CCA, as an acronym, also is known as Combat Command. Combat Command was back in World War II. There was this dude who was like, I don't like the way that the army's organized. This actually started in the 1930s, but in 1942, this guy set up this thing called Combat Command. He goes, I don't like the way that everything's organized. I need something that's far more fluid to fight in the field. What he, what he, what, so this was General... Adna Chaffee. People had weird names back then. General Adna Chaffee. This was the United States. What he wanted was he wanted a, basically, Chaffee wanted a completely fluid fighting force. If he, if he's like, listen, we need to take this area. Instead of using like this division and this division and this division, we're going to just scramble it all up. I'm going to take these tanks. I'm going to take these troops. I'm going to take a couple of your guns. Okay, I, I want your Jeeps, your CCA. Your Combat Command A. Then he had Combat Command B, Combat Command C, or Combat Command R, sometimes it's known as. And that was their reserve. And so it allowed him to move pieces around instead of having to play with whole divisions, to having to s- s- set in these whole things. He'd make mission specific groups. The problem was is that they weren't very cohesive because you all of a sudden had this, these infantry soldiers working with this group of artillery gunners, and they had never really met. So they weren't super cohesive. After the war, the the combat command ideology lasted until about the 60s. And then they said, you know what, let's do this thing. We're going to call them brigades. It's going to be kind of the same thing, but you're basically, you will be a brigade. It's not going to be super fluid. Well, we're going to table that one for a second because I want to get to this other one. This other one popped, I just saw this other one pop up within the last two days. CCA can also be known as Canonical Correlation Analysis. There's a paper that came out in 2014. And I thank you to the anonymous user who pulled this up, because this was another neat little piece of this puzzle. I had not found this in my own research. Canonical Correlation Analysis is, there's this paper came up in 2014. It is this software that allows you to take a 2D photo and basically match it to a 3D photo. So, facial recognition. Before, you would take a 2D photo, and they had like a 55% chance of matching it up to a person walking down the street. With this new technology that they've added, they have CCA, and then they have PCA. They believe that they can get it up to 85%. So, it's like Minority Report type stuff. You're walking down the street, and they're like, hey, we're looking for you, dude. And they see my face, and I'm like, ah, and I run away. XX1 in that scenario, though, referred to the mathematical formula. So basically mathematical vectors. So you like this vector's X, this vector's X1, this vector's XX1. I thought that was a cool little angle to go on. I went and I looked at the papers. I went and looked up the papers that the Anon had referenced on 4chan. And it still wasn't there for me. Because... The XX1 in that scenario was, again, simply a mathematical vector. It didn't have really any impact. It did predate the iceberg, which was a good lead. And the CCA does match, but the XX1 could have been XY1 or X1 or whatever. It didn't have any real bearing. So, like I said, I had this episode prepped a month ago, or more, two months ago. CCA, XX1. I kept going back to Combat Command. I kept going back to this idea of a mobile military force. But then I kept saying that it's called a brigade now. It's nothing. And I felt like I had run into a dead end. Then I found XX1. XX1 is, starting in 1994, a reorganization of the army 
to be a completely modifiable fighting force. It is basically combat command on a entire organization scale. In 1994, there was a pamphlet written up called Force XX1. It goes over how they want to redesign the military to fight the new wars for the coming century. One of the key parts of it is that it needs to be fast, flexible, deadly, and strong. It states that we can no longer afford to have the army of armies. We need to have a small army that's completely modifiable. Depending on the mission, we can pick what we need to do. Send them in, take them out. This idea of two armies clashing in the middle of the desert is on its way out. Now, again, this paper came out in 1994, so it was shortly after the Cold War. But these guys get paid to look 100 years into the future of warfare. It's all about technology. It's all about smaller engagements. Before the World Trade Center got blown up by Al-Qaeda, no internal explosions, but before 9-11... They're talking about how to take on these terrorists. The the pamphlet I'm going to link in the show notes, it's fascinating. Because they break down how wars are going to change. They said, the rules of war are gone. We're going to be fighting wars around hostages now. Like, you're going to have a legitimate government taking hostages. The, the, The rules of war are done. It's funny because they don't necessarily say, we're not going to do that. It just says that this these things are going to happen. I think it's interesting. So I'm going to quote here for a second. In this paper, he's saying, Force XX-1 is defined by five characteristics. Doctrinal flexibility, strategic mobility, tailorability, and and modularity, joint and multinational connectivity, and the versatility to function in war and operations outside of the war. So, you're like, Jason, okay, you have a paper called Force XX-1 Operations, which talks about tailoring the army to make it very fast, very mobile, very small, to take these operations and to move pieces around to fulfill different goals rather than moving in an entire army or entire divisions into an area, you could basically send in a small modular group. Isn't that the Navy SEALs? Isn't that Delta Force? No, that, that, those are surgical. What this is talking about, this is talking about a hammer. Not the massive wave of troops we've used in the past, but and not the small surgical strikes. This is basically a hammer that would move into the area, devastate the enemy, be as lethal as possible, and sustain the least amount of losses. You're not going to have these huge tank battles. You're going to have these small groups. And you're like, okay, that's fine, but who cares? That's not a secret conspiracy. The fact that the military has been shrinking and trying to become more mobile and more technologically efficient, that's not a secret. And you're right. But Combat Command A, XX1, is. See, Combat Command A was a modular force that was supposedly disbanded in the 1960s. Maybe it was disbanded. Maybe it was completely gone. And maybe Force XX1 is actually a full overhaul. But it is possible. If the if this series of numbers and letters means anything, and if I have if I'm on the right track, I could be totally wrong about this. But there may be now a group, a combat command A group, that is a completely modular small version of the army. You have a couple helicopters, a couple tanks, some engineers, some infantry, some demolitions. You have these specialists. You have a small version of what you would consider to be an army. But but hold, stay with me here. What if there is a small, basically a sample size of the U.S. Army? Not as surgical as the Navy SEALs where they're like coming in on their little dinghies. We're talking about a microcosm of the U.S. Army that is fast, can be deployed in a heartbeat, they're lethal, they're G.I. Joe. They're a mobile strike force. You would pull people from other divisions. Because the Navy SEALs, they're trained to be Navy SEALs. CCA XX1 would be, you would get the best people, like you'd get the best engineers, you'd get the best 
snipers. You'd get the best infantrymen. You'd get the best drivers. You'd get the best helicopter pilots. You'd get the best of the best, and you'd assemble them in Combat Command A, which was a fighting force. A completely, a completely modifiable fighting force. You bring them in there. You have them go on these missions, these small, hard strikes that require more force. You don't want to use that surgical strike. You want to smash an entire area. Whether or not CCA XX1 exists, I don't know. That's my hypothesis. If it does exist, has it been used? I don't know. That And see, this is the reason why I put off doing this episode for so long. I've never served in the military. I have a lot of friends and family who have served in the military. But this is a particular subject that I'm fairly weak on as far as how these things operate. You could say, Jason, that is completely ridiculous. There is no way, shape, or form that the military would want to make a small version of the army with the best of the best people, basically create G.I. Joe and have them go into an area. But if I'm on the right track, there basically is the army has created a mobile strike force, and that is the definition of G.I. Joe. Where G.I. Joe doesn't need a fleet of tanks. I'm I'm already second-guessing putting this episode out. G.I. Joe doesn't need a fleet of tanks. They need the best guys. They need the best four tank crews with the best four top-of-the-line experimental tanks. You don't need an entire helicopter attack wing. You just need the best helicopters with the best helicopter crews, the best engineers, the best people supporting that group. And you just move into an area and just, just just lay it out. Get out. You've left your calling card. Am I on the right track? I think so. But I could be wrong. This is my hypothesis. I'd like to hear back from you guys about this. Does America actually have a G.I. Joe? Does America actually have a modifiable force? Which that's what makes it different than the special forces we have. Where I know they will call in... Delta Force and stuff like that, they can call in other assets, but this one is basically a small version of the army that works on its own. Not like black, you know, not like they just do whatever they want, but they are basically a small version of the army that has its own command structure, but they will go on their own missions to take these targets out. Special forces are more surgical and more specialized. These guys are basically a giant army as a microcosm as a full-on fighting force that can support itself and not need to have these giant theater engagements. CCA XX1, I think that's a legitimate guess. I think that that is what it is. And I don't think that the FBI is going to knock down my door because everything I've found is available online. So there we go. Am I on the right track? I think so. And if I'm on the right track, honestly, that's pretty awesome. But again... Dealing with the military is not in my is not one of my strong suits as far as a knowledge base goes. So I'd be happy to hear your guys' opinions too. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys.